Howdy and giddy up, partners. It's Howdy. up number 13. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. How are we all doing this evening? Doing mighty fine. How are you doing? Good. <laughs> Housekeeping before we get started and introduce all the awesome people who I'm going to put our guest up there in the spotlight there. Uh, remember to lasso that like button, hit subscribe so you know when we're doing these things. But of course, we do this every uh, first and third uh, Friday, Sunday. So. <laughs> Easy for you to say, Joe. Dude, wait, 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 that's all guys, <laughs> I need to take like a two week nap. Mm -hmm. All set. Let's roll around and say hi to everybody in the chat. Hi to everybody in the chat. Okay, I did it. So our guest is, <laughs> is roll around. And then, what? Wait! Oh my gosh! Ron has Ron has dog. <laughs> like, uh, he followed me downstairs. Hi, dog. I told him, I told him we were going on a cattle drive. <laughs> and, not, and now he's afraid to walk across the silicon mat in front of him. It might as well be a river. <laughs> okay, so uh, our guest tonight is Bitfixer, who goes by the name of first name that I've forgotten. I'm a bad, 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 bad host. Mike. 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 Mike, that's <laughs> Mike. Yeah. How's it going? Hey, Good to be here. Thanks for having Thank me. Hi. <laughs> and uh, coming on to talk about fixing old computers with us. And you've got some really cool, cool, cool nerd toys that you've come up with that we want to talk about tonight. So right. before we dig in too far, let's uh, let's let's introduce you and uh, and just ask you. So who are you? What do you do? Who's your daddy? And what is <laughs> uh, well, like, I'm Mike, uh, sometimes known as Bitfixer. Um, I like old computers. I like uh, building stuff for them. The uh, recently, the it's a Romulator, is something that I built. It's a it's basically a RAM ROM replacement for 6502 machines. Plus, there's a debug, some debug features you can do. Um, some other things. There's a Pet Disk Max, which is a disk drive. Uh, replacement for um, for Commodore Pet and uh, some other gadgets, and uh, also like fixing them and just uh, messing around with old computers. So cool! What got you into the old computers? Do, has it been a passion since you were a kid? Is it a new thing? Or um, I guess let me think about that. Uh, I guess I guess the first sort of computer that I got that was sort of older than. The time that you're supposed to have the computer, I, I remember at some point in the 90s, I found a uh, Amiga 1000 at a garage sale. At that point, it was only like like eight years old or something. So it's like <laughs> that was, and then many many years later, then I started getting into it and uh, sort of just actively scouring Craigslist for whatever happened to be around. That was back when you could get stuff for free. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I managed to scoop up a few things during that era. Uh, not unfortunately, it's not. <laughs> that doesn't happen anymore. I don't know. I don't yeah. know that that's necessarily yeah. true. Yeah. yeah, I don't know that that's necessarily true because yeah. I mean, you can come by my house and pick up all the free broken CRTs that you can carry out of here. There you go. So, there you go. so free is free. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But uh, yeah, I feel like I've I've plenty to work on now. So I'm not really not really looking for it anymore at this point. It's a great project. Great project machine. Um. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah, I like Commodore Pet. I uh, have a few of those. Um, really, I'm I'm kind of agnostic. Any, you know, I like old computers in general. Whatever seen, whatever is in front of me, I generally like to tinker around with. So, do, do you have do you have a bit preference, like eight bits, because that's all you need? Oh, uh, yeah, I think I'm eight bit. I think uh, <laughs> I think I'm more in the eight bit category. It's sort of easier, easier, yeah. easier for me to comprehend. So. Yeah, you can kind of like put the whole machine yeah. in your head, and it's like I know how it works because yeah. I can brain it. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's why Mike is on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So uh, you are working on um, a couple really cool projects, and you mentioned them uh, during your introduction. One of them I wanted to focus on was the Romulator uh, for sure. the sixty five hundred two. So why don't you tell us a little bit about about that and what we can do with that thing? Sure. There you go. Yeah, Rudy's got one. So uh, yeah, the Romulator is uh, it's an FPGA based uh, board. It's basically it it basically emulates a uh, memory map 
for 6502. And so you have the FPGA, you have this interface board with which uh, plugs into the 6502 socket on a host machine. And then you put the S6502 on the Romulator itself. And uh, the you can program the um, the memory map onto the onto the FPGA. It comes with some default settings. A lot of them are for the pet because that's kind of how the project started. <clears throat> but basically, and uh, you know, pets seem to chronically have RAM and ROM failures all the time. So that was kind of how that how that originated. But uh, kind of expanded to other 6502 machines. But you can define in different regions different regions of memory. Uh, they, they can be conf configured as RAM, so you fully replace the RAM. It can be ROM, so you can replace it, but don't not allow writes. It can be pass through. It can be something I'm calling write through, which is used primarily for video RAM. So if you don't interfere with the function on the board, but you can still capture the writes, so that um, when you halt the CPU and look at the contents of memory, that's some you know, that's some else something you can do with it. Uh, you can see what the CPU is trying to write into uh, the video memory. And um, and I guess recently, using some sort of dual ported RAM on the FPGA, you can also have sort of a live virtual display on there as well. That's, that's again, that's if currently only for the pet is the only thing I've implemented it for. But you can you can run it without stopping the CPU and uh, in, a, in a browser using that little wireless uh, doohickey that uh, Rudy had up. Uh, you can basically view the uh, view a virtual screen on a browser on another computer. That is super awesome. Wirelessly, so, yes. Now it's wirelessly. Yeah. The, so they yeah originally it was uh, you can still use it with the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi was kind of like the programming and debugging harness for the Romulator. And uh, in addition to that, now there's also this. Uh, it's using a D1 Mini microcontroller board. Uh, so that's an alternate way to program it that doesn't require Raspberry Pi, since those seem to be, uh, again, uh, I don't know if they're still impossible to find. They were impossible a couple months ago, at least, when I looked. They're expensive. Yeah. Yeah, they had a couple. I think, like, the 400, the one with the keyboard, you can still get. But I can sell you one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One million dollars. <laughs> um, so you have to take your hat off, Javier. We can't. We, we you got, need to get the bald head thing going on. <laughs> One million dollars. Is that mini me? <laughs> mini me. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, that's great. So what kind of cool things can you do with the Romulator um uh specifically? Do you have um like uh, target use cases that you can <laughs> Describe in a little bit more detail. Than your sure. Yeah, I guess the, the the first use case for it was really in fixing fixing Commodore pets, um, and the the simplest thing is you can go in there and uh, if you replace all the RAM and the ROM, if if the if there's a fault on the board and it's restricted to just RAM or ROM or both, then it will just it'll just start working. You know, so so you won't uh, it basically cuts out that entire part of the uh, of the equation. So if it's restricted to that, then you'll know that it's working. And you can also, you can selectively, uh, you can you can check to see if it's ROM or RAM uh, as well. The, this, the second kind of, the second part of the Romulator function is the ability to uh, debug, which more or less consists of halting the CPU. You can just get the CPU to halt, and then you can dump the full contents of memory that are on the Romulator back to, uh, Either Raspberry Pi or uh, another another computer, and then you can just look at the memory. So you can see um, that will tell you. I mean, it it tells you for sure. It doesn't tell you the ROMs because it's you're reading your own ROMs, so that that doesn't help. But um, you can run. You can also run memory tests, and that that's a little bit simpler because you don't have to go and swapping ROMs in there if you have a ROM based memory test. Um, I guess prime the the original case was repairing things. And uh, specifically repairing Commodore PET, but I think it would be useful for other stuff as well. Um, and uh, there's a few other things you can do. I mean, I think since it's an FPGA-based thing, without changing the hardware, you could implement some more functionality if you wanted to. There could be RAM, there could be banking, memory banking that's not supported yet, but that could be added. Um, so it could be, sure. it could do more than diagnostics at that point. It could expand the capability of the system. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess yeah. memory expansion is another simple thing 
is a pretty basic thing you can do with it. Um, I think that uh, yeah, the VIC twenty was a, is a good example where you can. It's a pretty uh, pretty quick and easy memory expander for the VIC twenty. You just fill in the whole memory map, and there you go. Um, the sixty five hundred two machines tend to be a little um, yes, like relative. It's relatively straightforward to do that. So that yeah, that more the next one is the Z eighty version, and that. Uh, I'm just I'm finding that the, a lot of the Z80 machines had a lot more trickery and doing they're doing sort of clever stuff in there to expand memory and do other things. So it I think those may there's going to be more kind of case by case handling of individual computers for the Z80. Uh, but um, for the so 65, you are working on a Z80 option for that as well. I'm sorry. So you are working on a Z80 option. Yeah, yeah, I'm working on a Z80 right now, and uh, I have the have the prototype board at the moment, and uh, just going to do some testing and. See if it works. I think uh, I had another. I did some early testing on a ZX81, or I guess the Timex Sinclair 1000, the the US version of it. But um, you know, it's, it worked in a limited sense. Uh, that that computer does so much uh, cleverness in terms of you know mirroring memory all over the place that uh, I had to learn. I have to do some learning to figure it out. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Javier, careful! You'll get our account canceled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> I, I do have a uh, because like I'm 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 a 65 aficionado and and know just enough about uh, programming them and how they work to be dangerous. I do have one question. So if you yeah. use the uh, Romulator in a uh, a pet, for example, and you want to run a, a CPU halt, do you have to replace the CPU with like a 65 CSO2, like a static core? Uh, uh, no, you can use the regular. You can use the the regular, the, the original 6502 that came in the machine. And there's, uh, I believe it's the ready, the RDY line on the um, 6502 that I'm using. So basically it just tries to, it, it's in the middle of some access and then you just pull that line. I forget if it's low or high, actually. You just, you toggle that line and then it will just stop. It just stops oh, running. You know, as, long as, you, as long as you keep uh, pushing the clock to it. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 still getting the clock. The clock is not uh, stopped or anything, but it basically just it's in the middle of an access and it's just waiting for you to be done. And then you can you can read the memory. You can actually replace the memory of the running machine as well, which can be a little. You have to be a little careful with that because you can easily you can crash <laughs> if you replace memory. It's about to access then, or you know, it's not it's not backing up any registers or anything on the sixty five hundred two itself. So it's a little tricky. You have to. But you can replace ROMs easily if you want to. Uh, you can, if you want to do some trickery like that. Uh, Eric Rangel asked, "The Romulator fix fixes other pets." It is has the potential to, you know, be a repair tool in most pets. I would say um, pets have, you know, if if you just have if it's only RAM and if it's restricted to RAM and ROM, then it will pretty much just fix it. But uh, I've, oftentimes there's something else going on. Uh, there's plenty of other things that can fail. You know, you can logic chips, you can, or 6520 can fail, uh, various things. So, but it, it will help, you know, and you can also, it doesn't directly replace the video RAM, but you can kind of tell if it's the video RAM that's at fault because you can do that thing, that mirror, that uh, right through thing where you sit, you set up your video RAM and you do the right through and then you can actually look at what was supposed to be in there and see if it works. And if it does work, that means, okay, well, your video RAM is at fault. You have to fix it. But uh, it's, it's a repair tool, but it doesn't, you know, it's not 100% guaranteed, uh, but it will help, I think. Well, cool. this will narrow down the area of yeah. where to investigate, right? Like if you pop yeah. that in and your pet works, then you know, okay, it's it's got to be the memory or the ROMs or right. both. Right. And then you can use that tool to say, okay, let's uh, use only the uh, onboard ROMs or a particular ROM and then do another test. And then you can work it down without actually having to desolder because most of the chips are soldered into the board. So right. it's a great way to, to, to do diagnostics in that yeah. sense. You can swap ROMs out very easily. So you can, um, it, it removes a lot of, uh, removes a big part of the equation you can so you can uh, tell right away the only thing you can't do is you can't put the apple II roms on the pet i tried doesn't <laughs> <laughs> i mean you can but it won't do anything <laughs> yeah. yeah that's cool 
Rich Bray has a question here. Uh, aren't any clear pros or cons as compared to the ROM X, which is popular in the 6502 Apple II? Hmm. And that's a good question. I don't know if I'm familiar with the ROM X, actually. Uh, it, may, it might be one of these ones that uh, fully emulates the 6502, but I'm not, I'm not familiar enough with it to tell you. So I, I think that they, they have similar, they have an overlap, uh, Rich, but I think it's a little bit different. The ROM X is more designed to be a way for you to just replace your ROMs in your, in your Apple II. Uh, yeah. So, to have like custom bootable ROM like games and things, tools, preloads and stuff like that. It doesn't do anything with memory and it doesn't do anything with CPU. Uh, what what do I call it? your, your write through or your interruption right. capturing data? Whereas right. the Romulator does that and it's more designed as a diagnostic tool. Or otherwise, because you could play replace RAM, you could in theory use it like a ROM X, but it has. Like, does it have like just basically one ROM bank effectively that you could? I, I don't know how much. Oh, um, yeah. You can pick. You can pick. Uh, you can pick thirty-two different settings. So thirty. There's basically thirty-two full, sixty-four K memory maps that can be switched between, and so, so you can, it's kind of. Uh, that's yeah. more than the ROM X. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> no. Cool. Now, I think a four megabyte flash on there. So that's actually that doesn't even fill up the flash. The flash is like a little bit over half used with that. So you could even put more if you wanted to, but the, yeah, <laughs> that's what it is right now. Cool. I'm, I'm not very, very, you know, bright anyway, <laughs> but uh, what about, <laughs> can't you do, uh, since you're using an FPGA on top of the of the CPU, can't you do an accelerator with that? Um, I, I think in theory you could, if you, if you um, implement the processor itself, that would probably be, I would say that would be a good way to do an accelerator. I think there's other ways. I, there, there are probably other ways to do an accelerator. I, that was, I guess, not what I. That's what not. I didn't have to do that at all. Um, okay. but, but possibly, yeah, maybe you could you could potentially do that. Two uh, C plus. Asking has it been tested on a two C plus? It has not been tested on a two C plus. Um, isn't the two C plus? Does it have a variant of a sixty five hundred two? Or I can't remember now. Sixty five hundred two. CO2. Okay, so that it should should work. I have not directly tested it. It also runs at four megahertz. Oh, uh, I see. It's got its own zip chip style. Uh, it's actually licensed from them, but its own zip chip style accelerated. Okay. Um, well, if anybody uh, try it on C plus, let me know. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Any other questions, thoughts, comments on that, folks, in the chat? Any cool things, uh, additional uh, upcoming stuff for that project you're thinking about uh, you're thinking about doing, sir? I guess the uh, the, the Z80 version is the next the next uh, main thing I'm working on. Um, in theory, in I, I also have a prototype board for a 6510, um, which I never got super far on that. That's probably that would probably happen after the Z80 version. Um, you're gonna sell a lot of those if you get that going. Yeah, well, that that one has some. There will be some challenges there because uh, just the degree to which the the PLA is involved with the the functioning of the Commodore 64, it will mean that that uh, you, I think you may you may even have to kind of replicate the PLA entirely in there uh, to to make it. Useful, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It, that I, I tried it out. Even I got the prototype board, and I, it, I tried it out fully passed through, and it didn't work yet. So, to be, it's, uh, you know, it's cu coming up, coming up, but it's not quite ready yet. <laughs> Utterly unrelated. I would love to see a an aftermarket replacement for the sixty five ten that uses a six five zero two along with some custom logic to emulate that I/O port that it has. That I think that exists. There, there is, there is a project that does that. I think um, I'm trying to remember Where? the name of it though. Um, <laughs> I'll look it up. Someone emailed me to ask me if it really worked with that, so I have to find out what the name of that was. Cool. But uh, it does. It's a, it uses a CPLD, I think, and uh, does that. Yeah, it does exactly that. I think. Cool. Awesome. I'll find the name of that for you. I, I forgot. Name was BLT. A BLT. BLT. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Eat that, and you don't eat that, and you you fall asleep. You don't care anymore. Everything works fine. Would be so good right now. VLT would be pretty good right now. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, sidetracked. Back to what we were talking about. Squirrel. So, 
we're uh, we're rolling on up to the uh, the what you're working on section. We gave Mike his opportunity to talk yeah. about what he's working on. Ron, you've been muted this whole time. What are you working on, buddy? Working on being polite. <laughs> you know, so I figure I figured that uh, that there are times where you can just listen to a conversation, absorb information, and hopefully uh, increase your technical know-how. And I was taking full advantage of that in this conversation. <laughs> so very interesting points, very interesting conversation. I uh, also the dog was making like weird little like <laughs> noises, and I figured you guys didn't want to hear that. <laughs> Well, so. we figured out why why the dog followed you is because you had cookies. Yeah, I do. <clears throat> I'm like, uh, guy, these are murder cookies. They're chocolate chips. You can't eat that. No, get it. And so, what do you think? No. of? he's yeah, just like, I've lived a good life. I'm I'm willing to try. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, here, eat this dark chocolate and let me know how it goes. Uh, yeah. Maybe you will spontaneously, you know, develop the ability to, you know, deal with that. Turns into the Hulk dog. I maybe you uh, never know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! So, what am I working on? A little bit of everything. I, I I keep looking at this pile. You guys can't see it. It's just off camera. I have this pile. Yeah, Javier, just come on over. Um, I've got this huge pile of uh, 100 series power books, and I'm still uh, yeah. working on cleaning up. However, I have great news. I um I checked my list, and I just need a power book 140 which is part of the original series of power books that Apple released way back in the way back. I just need a power book 140 and I'll have a complete set. So if you have a power book 140 or, you know, somebody has a power book 140, please reach out to me. That'd be really great. But in terms of things I'm actually working on uh, right now, I actually have a couple of projects where uh, I ordered like just a mess of FPUs. And I mean, like just a mess of them from uh, uh, UT source. So I will be testing those in the next week or so, just because they do have a 100% refund policy. So if it turns out that it is just some Russian kid that etched, you know, <laughs> etched 68882 <laughs> on top of like a, a fun size Hershey bar, you can get your money back. <laughs> and I'm also I'm also doing a video, and it's actually you can see, kind of, oh no, you can't because I I don't know how to bend over. Um, Behind me, I'm actually working on a restore. Oh, yeah. No, I can just show you the guts. That's probably just as interesting. Um, I'm working on a restore video about the uh, the Apple uh, adjustable keyboard. Right. Nice. Yeah. So I've got I've got that in the hopper right now, too. But that's the that's the big stuff. That's what's happening here at uh, um, whatever the if you're gonna make a joke about um, about uh, Prairie Home Companion, I guess you gotta have it all planned out ahead of time. So <laughs> that's that's what's happening here, where the where the kids are well behaved and the women are beautiful and and funny third thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> here, what's going on in your world, man? Uh, well, I'm doing better than him, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> No, I've been working on my, actually, I've been working on my broadcast rig because I want to be like the big boys and I want to be able to bro broadcast like you guys. So yesterday, exactly, I had my first uh, test and it was successful. So um, I'm going to be doing more like Joe and Ron, doing more live broadcasts and I'm going to invite you guys so you can make fun of me live. <laughs> and also, I'm going to start working on the ZX Spectrum Plus 2. Um, it's ZX! You're in America! <laughs> Morica! Z, boys! So, <laughs> I'm going to put the TV thing that, that Rudy made inside, and uh, let's see what happens, you know? Are you going to hook it up? Yep. Just four screws, throw it in the case, seal it up. That's it. It'll, it'll figure it out. It's in God's hands now. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's what I do. I just, I just turn on my, my, my candles, and that's it. There you go. That's just put it in. Okay. <laughs> that's it. It's wire. I built it wirelessly, so you just throw it's it. Wireless. Yeah. Can you throw it? In your, you can even throw it in your washing machine and forget about it. it'll work. That's right. 
<laughs> so that's what I'm working on. <laughs> nice. Rudy, what's going on in your world, buddy? Uh, well, I am playing with the uh, Romulator. Now, Ooh. I've been asked by my, my wife, is that from Romulan? Is it like a Star Trek thing? Mm. It's like, <laughs> no, it's an emulator for ROMs called Romulan. Yes. Yeah. That wouldn't be bad, though. <laughs> so, yeah. So I have my uh, Apple II Plus clone, and uh, it's been working great in it. I've been playing around, learning the software. Um, I am using the, um, I'm not using the Raspberry Pi. I don't. Although I have several pies, but they're all for several projects. And what I like to do is guys, he has it, several pies. We need to raid that. Are any of them cherry or apple? <laughs> Stra strawberry. Mm. Raspberry? <laughs> Econ. <laughs> you lime. Yeah. Anyways, so I'm I'm using this uh, standalone adapter because um I can't find a Pi that I want to use for this. And all my projects that use a Raspberry Pi, I don't like using the same Pi for different projects. So I like to have, I buy a Pi for a project and because I don't have one, I really thought this was a really cool idea. So I'm playing around with this, yes. And um, the next thing, once I finish with the two plus clone, um, I'm going to be playing around with this on the two E. Nice. So the two E is a 65 CO2. So if this works great, we can get it working. Then there's the uh, 2E, and then um, eventually I'm not sure. I can't remember what's in the uh, um, the two. Sorry, the 2E. What's in the 2C? The processor again? The same processor? C65CO2 at four megahertz. Right. Right. Well, that's a plus. But the 2C is a 65CO2. Yeah. Right. So if this works in my 2E, it should work on the 2 plus. Yeah. Uh, sorry. If it 2C. works the 2E, it should work in the 2C. Oh my goodness, all these words. I, 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 I got to have more rum. Same thing. <laughs> you need yeah. the rum you later. Yeah. Rum. So I, I call it when you're when you're working and you have a drink. It's called the rum you later. <laughs> the rum you later. Rum you later. <laughs> Joe Lynch. And anyway, that's it nice. so far. Didn't you uh, do a, a your? Didn't you release a video today as well? Yes, actually, I did. I did a, um, I, I did a video on my uh, Commodore PET 4032 on future proofing the monitor, basically recapping the board. And lucky I did because I did find a cap that was getting ready to bulge and we released the magic goo. Yes. Um, I was told. Speaking of nice. speaking yeah. of releasing the magic goo, was this video released on your YouTube or over on your OnlyFans? Um, <laughs> I, uh, both. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm on, on my channel right here, you can see the video. And um, the, the, the weird thing with the videos, I recorded the whole thing. I did the repair, I did the fix, I did everything, worked fine, and the audio wasn't plugged in. <laughs> so I had to go back and do a voiceover, and it's like, oh, it's such a pain doing voiceover after the video, they get everything lined up and sync. But anyway, it's done. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Joe, what are you working on? Too much. Okay, next. <laughs> no, um, right now I am working on doing a hand wired data netics keyboard for the app too. Ooh. Just kind of this hand wired array thing because uh, I have, I am borrowing somebody's data netics keyboard right now so that I could make. The, a replacement encoder for those data netics keyboards, if it'll focus. But the thing is, is I got to send this keyboard along with this encoder back to that person. So I need a keyboard to test them with. And as everybody knows, the data netics style keyboards for the Apple IIs are basically impossible to find. And if you do find one, they're it's going to be attached to the Apple II, and it's going to be one of the raised power light ones, and it's going to be four quadrillion, you know, Copex or whatever, the, you know. The current um, exchange rate is. Yeah. So that's why I'm wiring wiring up this little this little thing, a doodle. Thing, a doodle, folks. Thing, a doodle. That's right. Right. And Joe's a copyright on that. Yes. <laughs> so. Yes. So that's in. Yeah, and like Eric Rangel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, they're just little push buttons. That way it would fit the uh, fit the grid of the the. 
um, whatever this, the perf board. Yeah. Uh, actual key switches, one, they cost like 55 cents a piece instead of these, which are two tenths of a cent a piece, and they don't fit the, the grid, so you can't use real keys. Anyway, whatever. Um, I'm also uh, working on the Mac Effects Apple IIc keyboard a little bit again. Um, we uh, got a little bit extra more traction in that, in that process. There's been a lot of, how can we say, delays due to worldwide everything being absolutely crazy right now. Um, but we've got a little bit more, a um, little bit more progress on that that I've been working on. I finally got my Franklin Ace 2000 stable enough so that I can yeah. actually test my my aftermarket RAM boards for that. That was fun. I told you, Joe, the whole time, all you had to do was move that pile of mail that you had it kind of yeah. like teeter tottering on top of. <laughs> pull that off from underneath, lay it flat on the desk, and you'll be able to type. I don't know why this was such a like a chore with you to get you to just try it. It's ADHD. Uh, I, I, like thinking is not a thing my brain does. I kind of just see things and then do them and then magically um, things occur. So you know. I told you, I told him to pick it up and drop it like six inches off the table and just that's, let that's, it go. That's, drop that's it like it's hot. It works. It works for the Apple three. Yeah, yeah. It, works for it also works for the Macintosh classic. It'll reset the CRT. No trouble. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Max, uh, Rudy's going to be sending me this color classic for a recap, and maybe we can live stream of uh, uh, doing a recap of that. Uh, yes. and, uh, in addition to that, I'm open again for repairs. My repair schedule is open again. So if you guys got classic Mac, uh, Mac boards or Apple IIs or anything like that that you need to uh, look at, hit me up, jcm-1.com. What yeah, can I that, what can I, I bring? Saw, I saw a post about that. <laughs> yes. I need you to fix this too, Joe. Send it. I yes. might be able to figure it out. I don't know. Last one I got one of those, it yes. everything looked perfectly fine and it still didn't work. It must have just it has it. three chips. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm thinking that this would be a great <laughs> candidate for a uh you could totally just, you know, redo it. Like make a copy, <laughs> make a copy of it, Joe. And we need cloning too, remember? Yeah, yeah. I'm supposed to do a video on or some sort of live stream on teaching people how to clone boards. I got a, a yeah, a, what are schedules? What uh, what are mm -hmm. what what like I've got a like I've got a list of things up here and like other things come in, they get my attention, and then they go on the list, and that keeps happening until the list is like a roll of tractor feed paper that goes down and like up the stairs and into the upstairs room. And then I get yelled at because like the hobby is migrating out of the basement. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's what that is. But Joe, if you do the, if you do the video, I will be bothering you and say, Joe, what's a, uh, uh, what's the, what's these drill, uh, crap that they want. <laughs> to <make them> <laughs> yeah. Don't, when you send your PCBs in, don't send the drill file. That is really, yeah. Weird. That just seems like you're wasting their time. Yeah. Just put a hole here and a hole there. What do you need that? Yeah, it's, he, just look it's, at it. You can't there's tell a lot of circles. Really just do it. Like, what the, yeah. I don't get it. Garth Beagle, I wonder if Joe can fix my LC575 board. I'm willing to give it a try. Sure I don't know can. how bad it is. Is a battery bomb to get destroyed? Has Steve already looked at it? <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. Um, so, yeah. Uh, other than that, I've been trying to organize this mess back here. I have it slightly better organized. You can't really tell. I can tell. I can walk through it now. So that's the thing. Yep. Nice. That's all that's going on in my world as far as what's working on. So, Lau, let's talk about nifty, cool toys that we've got recently. Let's start with Mr. Mike. What have you gotten recently right. that's really nifty that you want to share? Well, this, uh... Show and tell time. We should just rename the section show and tell. Yes. Right. I got this here. Can you see that? Coco. Uh, oh uh, no! MSX. MSX. Oh. MSX from Egypt, I think. MSX. Uh, yeah. Oh. Nice. Um, and it, it does work, except there's something. I think the keyboard has a little bit of a of an issue. So that's that's in the. It's, it's in the because computer. the letters are different. It has <laughs> ten. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ten. What? Wait a minute. What what makes it from? How do you know it's from Egypt? If you look I mean, at the it's an Arabic the keys. keys, it has the keys oh. in the keyboard. I didn't oh. see it. I thought it was more of going to be a situation of that, like if you were to like 
open the the little door where you put the cartridge in that like you're you know, like there's a curse or something. Oh yeah. yeah. No, or, that, or that or that or that all of your software is actually in the it's British Thomas Museum. It was delivered by a camel. Yeah. <laughs> it belongs in a museum. But did you <laughs> guys, from, guys uh, from eBay. hold on. Wait a minute. Hold on. You glossed over a really good joke. I said <laughs> that all your software is actually in the British Museum. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that's a smart joke for a smart show and a smart <laughs> audience. I know. Huh? <laughs> so that's one story. I've got uh, oh, this is another one. This is a rare thrift store finds. But uh here you go. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, nice. Pretty nice. Pretty yeah. Later. No, nice. That's kind of cool. Looks like Beautiful. it's cool. Yeah. toasted, but hopefully uh can do something with this. And yeah, that's a great way to cheat on your exams. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, my, my son had map testing recently because it's uh, American schools are going through all that right now. And so uh, they were like, yeah, we're not allowed. We can't bring our phone. You can't do all these things. You can't, you know, they don't want you. Uh, they don't want you cheating. And I said, here's what you need to do. You need to get a post-it note. You need to write something on it and just kind of like keep pulling it out in class and stuff when they come over. And when you give it to them, you just have written on it all the answers that work that <laughs> now it's he oh, yeah. wrote down all the one, answers one in the small one i don't know which it's a different model oh, you, got, you have two of them. Oh, you get two of them nice yeah, you got two of them. there's a little one in the i think this one's like a little chunkier i don't know what the oh, uh, model yeah. number is but that's uh, nice yeah, and it's yeah it's a very, very uh <clears throat> every time you know i'm around a thrift store i do take a look but never found anything in in many many years but it, if they don't work, you should put a Raspberry Pi in there. Yeah. If they don't work, yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's your solution for everything, Javier. <laughs> yeah. That's my uh, this most recent toys that I that I found. Nice. Oh, yeah. Way cool. Do you have it? I just sell for like six thousand dollars on eBay, like everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Do you Super have rare. rare. You keep cutting me off, Rudy. Shut up. <laughs> I'm really bad at detecting when people have stopped their conversation. So I'm the one who usually ends up cutting people off or getting cut off. Either way, <laughs> I'm always the one who loses. Anyway, uh, do, do, do you, <laughs> but hey, uh, do you have any uh, any uh, cool things that uh, you're, you've been looking for to add to your collection? Um, uh, looking for, um, there's always a few things that are uh, kind of the, I guess there's always the holy grail items. I think. Uh, the the one that Rudy was talking about earlier, the the pet, um, which one's that? Eighty two ninety six. The uh, the CGM uh, one. Yeah, thirty two ninety six. It's uh, yeah. it's a only a European sold pet, and it comes a very, very futuristic rounded edge rounded edge case and stuff. It's really neat, but yeah. it's very difficult to find you in North America. Like, and yeah. if you do, it's like super expensive. That would be nice. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not holding out hope for that one anytime soon. But um, I don't know. Let's see. What are my other my other uh, fantasy computers? I, I can't think of anything right now. But they're you know, I'll know it when I see it. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I want. That means. Whatever I see is the one that I that I want. If I find one, mm -hmm. if I find one in the wild, then I just I have to have it. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Ron. Hey, can can uh, can I go uh, next? Because I'm I was putting pictures together of something cool that I picked up. Go ahead. Oh, so I go now. Okay. Okay, I understood. So I got a couple of things that I I I've been working on and I'm gonna be working on. Uh, one of them is this uh, ROM X that you were talking about before. Oh. This is actually uh, because I have you, you, you. Everybody knows by now that I have an Apple IIc in Spanish, and I want to take the Spanish ROM, you know, the the character encoder, and I'm gonna I want to copy it to the ROM X so I can use those uh, that, that Spanish keys, you know, mm -hmm. and instead of sending it to the guys from ROM X. They actually sold sent me this this little device that I I gotta use to to do that. So I, I I'm supposed to put the ROM over here and then put it in a in a ROM uh, burner, you know, a, a, one of those burners, and then something something and and it will work. So I 
<laughs> I've been reading the manual like <laughs> I don't understand it. Joe, Joe, let us know how that works out for you. <laughs> so I'm actually going to do a video about it because I, I, I don't get it. So he's going to help me. And yeah, it's actually one of those. Yeah, but <laughs> there's more of that. So I, I couldn't get it. So I was like, Ugh. so I'm no. I, uh, <laughs> but I'm going to be working on that. That's what I was talking about. And also, I got a TP or TIPI, whatever it's called. <laughs> This, this is it. So, so yeah, it's a TI Pi. Mm. I just got it a few days ago and I forgot about it. So, this the cool thing about this one is that this replaces the this this piece or it goes in, in here. So, it looks kind of original from the TI. Mm -hmm. Of course, I gotta take this out so you don't you don't get confused. But you know, this uh, goes in here now. So it it, it it works, you know. It, it, this is this is gonna be the. Is that the stapler for the TI? Yeah, <laughs> <a> stapler. <laughs> I always wondered what what goes in there. I have one. <laughs> I, I, I never. Remember, I thought it was like a cartridge, but it it doesn't have anything like a connector in there. So I don't know why they did this. Yeah. This is a Isn't weird. That like a speech synthesizer. Yeah, it's a speech synthesizer, and you have to open them. You have to open the mouth when it talks. <laughs> so. Right? Could you motorize it so it synchronizes with the top? Oh, that would be, yeah. that would be cool, actually. Oh, yeah. ideas. Ideas. Well, ideas. The pie can be the controller, and you can. Welcome to the world of the eye. Cool. But what does the what does the TP do? I don't. I think we got sidetracked. It's uh, it's. It's supposed to be, um, you know, like a hard drive emulator, and also you can do Wi-Fi, connect the, the TI to the internet to a BBS or something like that, and actually you can browse it. But for a TI ninety nine for it, I mean TIs are are pretty good, pretty, you know, it's a sixteen bit machine, you know that, and yeah, uh, eight was running, yes, yeah, it was very advanced for its time. But uh, but again, you know, I I wanted for for to put games in there, and then I got it, and they told me, oh no, you cannot put games in there. You need a cartridge for that. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay, yeah. I'll get yeah. it. Yeah. The same thing happened when I got my twenty six hundred. Says no, you gotta put games in there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'm telling you. So, I'll put it together, see what I can do with it, and and then I'll get the game cartridge. Cool. cool. That's it. That's all I got. Rudy. Oh, not back to Ron? Okay. No, um, I need more time. Yeah. Okay. So I, 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 I Ron, Ron doesn't exist. I mean, he's I'm, just, I'm hacking the Gibson here. You're going to have to be patient. Yeah, he's just, <laughs> I mean, I don't know who's, who's Ron. I don't know. So, who's Ron. Oh, he's Goner. <laughs> <laughs> so what I, I got, I've already mentioned, I got the uh, ROM later. I'm playing with that. Um, very cool. Very, I, 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 I really like it. Wish I had it earlier in my life to make my pet repairs a lot easier. <laughs> this is going to cut the time that by almost half. <laughs> and considering that most of the stuff is soldered in to the uh, pet, other than like this 6502, and I think it's the edit ROM, um, everything is soldered in. So it's a real pain. You have to get your scope out and start scoping everything to find it. But, anyways, that's my latest get. Eh, oh, sorry. Uh, I got this thing from Ron, so I got to figure out how to plug it into my dishwasher. I'm not sure, but it, it, I'm, I'm not sure. So I have to, so uh, I want to say, thanks, Ron. <laughs> You're the man. Um, I do what I can. Yeah, so I'm going to be uh, playing around with that soon. That's my, that's my gets. Cool. Yeah, I need to, don't worry. Uh Exodium, there's only so many April Fool's days coming up. So we'll we'll get to that next year. <laughs> Are you ready yet, Ron? Are you only yeah, to no. Oh, almost. Hold on. <sighs> All right. So I can't find good photos because Facebook. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> so right, hold on one second. I mean, I'm gonna on. see. I'm gonna see if I can make this work. Uh, yes, I have made it work. Is it, is it working? Yep. Okay. Am I doing it? All right, great. 
Okay, you might make me a full screen for a second. Yep. Okay, so <clears throat> very recently, I live, um, if there is a bright point in the universe, I live the furthest from it. And the, uh, the Facebook offerings, uh, Facebook marketplace offerings around here typically aren't, uh, you don't see a lot of great stuff. So um, recently, though, I did see that uh, someone had put up about five hours away, but I've got friends that live out that direction. It's the Midwest, so that's totally driving distance. Um, but a friend of mine uh, was able to go and pick these up for me. Uh, the this is a ninety sorry this is a ninety six hundred. So if you kind of look at, let me get the. Uh, up here. Oh, no, I can't do that. All right, here we go. Um, if you look at the card here, this 9600 has a um, Apple P uh, PC compatibility card in there. And that's the like the 166 Pentium version. So that's kind of a nice little thing there. Um, so if this machine boots and works, which I mean, I haven't been over there to actually test it out yet. It'll be kind of a cool find. But the interesting thing, which appears to be clipped off the screen at the moment, can I? How do I? Technical difficulties. How, how do I? Do, 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 do. How I make this work? All right, hold on. All right, so that's probably better. But if you take a look at this card right here, um, it is a like a Voodoo one. So I, I am very curious to find out the DOS compatibility card for the Macintosh plus this Voodoo One. If somebody on this machine has like a really killer DOS gaming setup on this old Mac, I just thought it'd be interesting to explore. But um, so there's this 9600 and then there was also an 840AV, which should make uh, Steve from Steve's uh, computer videos. Is that the name of his channel? Um, should make him very uh, pleased. Uh, because it might be some parts or something that he'll maybe need. But I got the whole thing for 150 bucks. So oh, yeah. that is that is like a super amaze balls deal. Yep. That's my that's my a new segment on the show. It's the amaze balls oh, deal oh, of the week. Amaze balls. Yeah. That's it. That's my cool thing. I wish oh, I had better photos, but Facebook doesn't seem to hold on to that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is going on? <laughs> Did somebody get sucked out of an airplane real fast? What happened? <laughs> Weird. Yeah, it's on Joe's end. It's on Joe's end. That's right. <laughs> Joe. You okay? What? Joe, what the heck is going on? Does I Alexander... Does, oh, he does, got it. Is that better? Does Alexander Graham Bell need you in the next room immediately, Joe? <laughs> watch him, watch him, get in here. It sounds like you're talking to air traffic control. Yeah. Is that better? Joe, I, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a slightly, like yeah. just the slightest <laughs> amount better. I still hear myself. I don't know what's going on. Uh, maintain heading uh, one six five nine. <laughs> Joe, to land in five minutes. Over. Joe, do you have any great songs that are recorded on records that are like this thick? <laughs> yeah, Joe's getting feedback. Yeah, it's from Javier. Oh, now here we go. Yep. I was muted. Don't blame it on me. I muted you, and the sound went away. Yeah, that's how muting works. <laughs> it's your Wi-Fi. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Why a wire? Yeah, blame it on me. I mean, I I understand Miami's got lots of problems, Javier, but we don't need this one. <laughs> I'm, I mean, it's your 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 microphone is the boob sweat of microphones. Oh. <laughs> That's that's a very Florida joke. I uh, I do regional humor now. <laughs> the past to allow the video to move on. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Corey is correct. Feedback is a gift. So, Joe, what what about you? Oh, too much and not enough, man. Gosh. So, 
my my biggest recent get has been a huge haul of uh, PLA filament, special colored PLA filament from the Netherlands of all places. Nice. So Javier, who did most of the work, um, I'm just like shipping and putting labels on things. Um, but uh, we we worked together with a, a bunch of people on the Tinker Different Forum, and we did a group buy uh, of the RAL7044 filament um, that apparently the only company in the world that makes this is the company called ColorFab in the Netherlands. It's basically Apple platinum colored plastic filament. Ooh, cool. Um, and nice. so we did a mass buy, a group buy, and uh, I have... You can't see it's back here. You can't see it, but I have like like 10 rolls of that stuff that I'm shipping out to people. Nice. Um, by doing that, the group shipping it being lower, so it's it cost everybody less uh, to get a roll of it than if they had bought it directly. So I had kind of a little weird community thing we did to get that uh, PLA in more people's hands. And man, that color match is, oh, it's like so insanely close. It's, 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 it's really good. Did you get a shipment container? What's that? Did I did get a shipment container? No, container? no, we didn't get quite that much, but uh, I am working on it. Joe, now what <laughs> makes this, what makes this PLA from the Netherlands? Does it just automatically have like robust public transportation, healthcare, and like two weeks of paid vacation every year? How does that, what makes it? Hold on, isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? <laughs> On top of that, every single box of PLA you get gets shipped with a bouquet of tulips. That's really neat. <laughs> uh, they better be careful, they'll collapse their economy again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously, it's just the, the, the color matching on it is outstandingly perfect. It, I went through a process over the past year or so going through different PLA filaments trying to find one that was a really good match using... Uh, that the thing that I just dropped on the floor, color matching sensor and all of that stuff to uh, figure out how to do the plastic right and all of that stuff. So they okay. are they do a really good job. The only downside is it's like $60 a roll. It's insanely expensive. It's three wow. times because it's special color batch matched, um, certified matched color. So, And I think I found also the, the color for the Apple 2C too. So we'll see. When when I get it, light the the two, early bright white color. Yep. yep. Is that a new I, Yeah. The 2C2? Mm -hmm. 2C two C two. 2C also. It's yeah. it's kind of a limited edition. <laughs> Only sold in education. Actually, I was able to find the PLA uh, for all of these uh, machines that uh, Javier uh, retro brights beforehand. It's called Smoker's Lung. It's very, <laughs> it's, it's very exclusive. You can only get it at Sears in the seventies. But you just, <laughs> we'll, we'll go back there. It's um, you can make your own. All you have to do is uh, go on a nationwide road trip with your kids, smoke the whole way with the windows up, and when you're done, you're all set. <laughs> get that retro look on your computer. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You'll you'll be smoking in the doctor's office saying, "Why do all these kids have asthma?" I don't, I don't understand. I mean, they. Uh, my doctor said Paul Malls. I switched. They love kids. Love nicotine. Come on. <laughs> woman, woman love nicotine. You you got to just puff in their face, and they'll fall in love with with you. I I, I saw those ads, and I was, I was like, like in the fifties. Who wrote this? Someone, someone who's never seen a vulva. That's who wrote this. That's right. Jesus. Oh my God. We are, we are now officially uh, adult rated for the rest. Listen, of the <laughs> vulva is not an adult rated word. It's, I mean, we're demonetized, yes, but that's different. <laughs> that's, that's, for, that's for different reasons. Oh, I think we better move on to the repair. <laughs> yeah, I think the repair. <laughs> hey, I wasn't done. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Well, tell us, Joe. So, more about Hall. Why am I so tired? I wanted to bring that up and ask that as a serious question. It's because you've been, you know, sending emails to Hall and I'm back. It's going to take uh, right. Hall takes a toll on it. Hall. You, know, mm -hmm. you, know you need to switch to a better brand of vape because whatever <laughs> it is you're on right now, 
<laughs> you, you just actually, it's it's just the straight, it's the oil from the popcorn. You're, you're just smoking the stuff that breaks your lungs down. You got to add, you got to have like nicotine in the flavorant so that way that you can, you know, miss, oh, miss yeah. those nursing home years at the end of your life. Oh. Miss the adult diaper years at the end of your life. <laughs> but seriously, though, I have been kind of weird and under the... Like, not yeah. like, You're not the only Well, hold on. Baseline weird for Joe. What are we talking here? <laughs> Define weird. Yeah, I just... I mean, I'm looking not- in my windows at night, like <laughs> weird, or... <laughs> or or just like oh, lighting candles with goats. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so no, so I've just been a little weird and under the weather and kind of bleh for myself and whatever. It's, it's spring, so, man. It's the it's, it's just that time you get you get allergies. It's a young man's fancy turns to romance. It's all the things. You're probably just heavy with male jelly. That's. <laughs> You should you should find a jelly. You should oh find a mate. Oh and, and do what comes I'm dying. I'm dying. I said it before and I'll say it again. I love you, man. You're the best. I love you too, Joe. You're one of my favorite people. Uh, Just remember, folks, if you're not feeling well, don't talk to Ron. <laughs> no. It's, You'll say it's your male jelly. Yes. Oh man. Mike, I don't know what we got you into, buddy. Uh, sorry, Mike. <laughs> You're off the rails officially. Moving on, repair topic of the week. It's it's amazing how none of our guests want to come back after this. <laughs> I I don't know. It's we've had uh, like Steve keeps coming back on here because I think he's yeah, a weirdo. He's like, he's, he's I think he's a weirdo guy. like we're weirdos, so it all works out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, moving on. <laughs> moving on, moving on. Oh, yeah, what are you fixing? Um, same thing that I told you, I'm fixing the, the, oh yeah, no, I was doing some, uh, retro writing, some keyboards that I got somewhere around, but yeah, that's it. The uh, retro writing keyboards and preparing my, my uh, video re- broadcasting thing. Cool. Live stream. Let's yep. go back to our guest. What are you Please. working on? What are you, what's new? Uh, here? let's see. Well, I had kind of a weird, sort of a weird repair experience just now. I got some replacement uh, FPGA boards for the Romulator. Um, and it was just odd because these it was exactly the same. It was just a new batch. It was the same design, same type of board, same parts, everything. Uh, the only difference was like where I got the boards and who, you know, where I got it assembled. But the, the real thing is what, you know, got it programmed up and it didn't work. So I was a little slightly freaked out about that. Um, I was a little concerned that I <laughs> spent, spent a lot of money on some some busted boards, but uh, in the end, it turned out that uh, it's one of these these bugs that you just don't know. You don't understand how it ever worked in the first place. Oh yeah. Um, it basically, it was like it came down to like in the in the Verilog code for the FPGA, I had these like pull up resistor internal pull ups turned off, and they really should have been on all along, but they were turned off. Uh, but somehow, it just never was a problem before. And then, but somehow, this batch, it just is. And like over the whole course of everything I got, like maybe one or two didn't work. And I, I just chalked that up to bad boards, but it turns out that was, I was actually, those had the same problem. So those, those work now as well. Manufacturing so, variation. Yeah. Yep. Make so, sure your pull-ups are always on. Yes. Yeah. I need to turn the pull-ups on. So I guess like, I don't know, slightly different amount of copper in the traces. Who knows? Uh, it's it's kind of weird. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, yep. um, I guess aside from that, I did get, uh, I, Traded somebody on the the VCF forum uh, some of my gadgets for a bunch of uh, broken C64 boards. So probably try to try to get those going pretty soon. Um, some of them are missing a bunch of parts, but uh, yeah, I think it'll be a nice uh, little repairathon sort yeah. of cool. thing. Yeah, live stream it, make it occur. Yeah. Yeah, do a live stream. Mm-hmm. It'll be uh, yeah, <laughs> a live stream of me failing to repair a bunch of stuff. But we'll see. Okay. <laughs> it wouldn't well, be the first one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now that YouTube has that thing where they um, allow you to do a live stream and then basically make pointers that will automatically redirect people to the next, so you can have community events where you do like a repairathon kind of thing. What Joe? It's it, they're copying the Twitch 
raid function. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's uh, if it's anything like Raid Shadow Legends, it's going to be huge. <laughs> Speaking of Raid Shadow Legends, they're not this week's sponsor. It's amazing. It's we're the only show that's not sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. But what I was going to say is that. We we should absolutely do something like that. Have like a repairathon thing where people kind of bounce and and you know I I'm gonna say 48 hours, just you know like a realistic goal of Joe being able to stay awake for 48 hours. It's yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I do nice. have this sort of uh, albatross of a failed repair that I want to get back to at some point. It's a Mac SE30 that. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it looked like it was going to be like an easy recap kind of situation, but did the recap? No change, you know. So that one, I just and I have no way of knowing. Like, did I just screw up the recap and now I really broke it, or or what? But uh, <laughs> SE thirty, SE thirty, yeah. Mm -hmm. SE thirty is one of those machines where they really, really benefit from a little bit of time in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner too. Yeah, yeah. Cuz you'll that get one. you'll get corrosion, you'll get dead yeah. shorts under those chips and there's just no way. Yeah. yeah. No so way I think to it know. could be something like that and I'm you know, it was it was one of these things where yeah, I'm almost embarrassed to show someone because they'll they'll see my terrible uh the terrible work I did on it. <laughs> but uh, jcm-1.com/contact. All right. <laughs> I hit you up on that one. Yeah. <laughs> cool. And Rudy, you were figuring you were fixing a vacuum. What? Yes, uh, kind of like retro, but not really. It's uh, my mom has a Dyson D10 vacuum, cordless vacuum. Your mom has a Dyson sphere. What? A Dyson yeah. vacuum. It's vacuum. it's yeah, it's, it's nice. Scotty crashed into the outside of it. That's right, and uh, and it just won't work anymore. So my sister. Took a look at it and called up Dyson. Says, "Oh, we'll we'll send you twenty twenty dollar off your next purchase on an eight hundred plus dollar vacuum." And it's like, right. what? So I took it home, <laughs> and it's like, wait a minute, this is the same as mine. I pulled the battery out, swapped them, and it worked. So it's a dead battery. Yeah. So easy fix, but that was that was that was my repair for the week. Cool. Now the problem is getting getting paid for it. That's the problem. <laughs> Just. Just bill them. Just bit. Make sure it's I net do, ten. It, she keeps writing back wrong address and sends it no, back. No. <laughs> uh, that's when you show up randomly, drop the kids off, and be like, "Yeah, we need to go somewhere. Can you watch them?" And you just leave. Yeah. Freak. Well, I don't have kids, but I do with my wife. But my mom loves my wife, so it's like, oh, come on. <laughs> Can't get satisfaction. Anyway, um, yeah. So if you have a Dyson vacuum that doesn't work. Check the battery. Alma, I, check your battery. Check your just, battery. Yeah, I was just thinking for a second, though, because I was just like, every vacuum I've ever owned is just like plugs in the wall. I didn't I didn't really. The, the story took a real turn when you were like, oh, yeah, it turns out it's the battery for my, for my wireless vacuum. Mm -hmm. like, well, all right. Canada. <laughs> It, it worked great instead of carrying a big long cord around the house. I guess it's a vacuum. I, you just use a cordless vacuum. Things are just different in America's hat than They're they just, are in, yeah. in Canada's pants. It's just <laughs> they have they just do different things. It's yes, you know, it's, wireless vacuums, bacon on everything. Actually, I mean, that's kind of here now though. But it's actually, I mean, a cordless no, vacuum, not wireless. Well, it that's the same, isn't it? Right. Do I know your smartphone, right? Well, it's your own damn fault for not getting it on the Wi Fi. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> how are you gonna know when it's done? Wi Fi is down, that's why the vacuum doesn't work. That's <laughs> it it's under the, the bottom of the router. I've told you that yeah. the, the Chinese company that made the uh, the internet connection uh, connectivity software for it went out of business, so it's that's just, right. Yeah, <laughs> so it's just all my all my requests to pick up dirt are just getting black holed. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm. Moss technology. There you go. Very sad. Very sad. <laughs> oh, Joe, what are you working on? Oh, gee, many Christmas. The big repair thing I'm working on um, is again the uh, the um, uh, brain rebooting in the middle of a phrase. Um, it's my brain, apparently. Um, I, I'm clearly failing, 
and I and I need you know I need a little it needs a little more rework. I need some soldering, some wiring. Um, no, seriously, the Franklin Ace 2200 has been my my kind of thing the past a uh, couple weeks. Trying to, long story short, Too I've late. said it, I've said it a billion times. Basically, I'm making these replacement RAM uh, cards for them, and I basically I found that the the one of the uh, the custom chips, one of the uh, the custom PAL chips, had failed. Javier was very gracious to send me his board, which I was able to use to compare that, figure that out, blah, 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 blah. I've been able to hack together a replacement um, a PAL chip by using a ROM. Nice. Uh, this, this, this PAL, and if it's effectively a 64 kilobit by two, 60, yeah, 64 K by two bit ROM. That's how it works. So I was able to do, ROM, it? ROM, do that, dump Javier's raw, uh, truth able program in there and it, it works so so now i can maybe in theory get to the point of selling these boards and getting them out to people um the downside is is that they're going to be more expensive than i thought because the ram that i purchased i purchased from ut source um it was all correct but it the failure rate is uh, of the ram i got is somewhere around 20 percent oh failing like that's a lot hours later so like I could build it, test it, ship it, it gets to the person and it's dead. Seems like it's their problem at that point. Well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. But you know, I'm really not set up to do refunds and my lawyer says like I shouldn't get into trouble, you know, since that last thing in Las Vegas and <laughs> <laughs> Joe Joe's lawyer keeps saying, uh, you oh. you have spent your deposit, sir. Uh, there is no additional funding here until you uh, give me some more monies. Yes. So that's uh, that's that's the basic thing. And, you know, the things I've already talked about, but a billion things. Yeah. And again, as far as repairs, my repair window is open. So if you want to send me things to work on, I love working on old computers and fixing them up for people. So just ship me yeah. up and I'll fix it. Can I, can I show something that I'm working on, too? Go ahead. Yeah. That's cool. Hi. Hey. Hi, everyone. My name is Ron. I'm, a, I'm making an AA joke. Hi, everyone. My name is Ron. Hi, Ron. Hi, Ron. And Hi, Ron. I, I am anti-battery in old computers. <laughs> and so uh, for quite a while now, I've been working on a couple of different projects where what I'm trying to do is give people options to get their batteries out of their old machines. So maybe have a remote mounting method, something like that. And I made some work or I made some advancement on that this week. Uh, and I wanted to show everybody the picture of what I'm doing. Hold on. Hey, oh my gosh, it just worked like right out the gate. Wow. Nice. Would you would you big screen me, uh, sir? Oh, yeah, because I'm, yeah, see, uh, ADHD, I can't remember. That's okay. There you All go. All right. So the idea is basically you've got a little, um, like, and I know Adafruit and different companies uh, make similar things, but they don't have my logos on them. So, of <laughs> course, of course, vanity has to take front front seat. And so uh, the idea is that I'll have a, a little uh, remote battery and none of the art, nothing's finalized yet, but basically the idea is where you can then, um, <clears throat> I don't have a picture of this, but it's a little sabot that will uh, be remote at the battery connection. It's a 3D printed, resin printed uh, battery basically that has leads and stuff that you can just drop right in the slot. It'll hold in there because it's the exact same size and tolerance as a real half uh, AA. Okay. And then you can, as long as you need the, the wire, run this outside of your case or to a remote place inside the computer. So that way that you can um, avoid uh, future heartbreak if a battery were to leak. Uh, the chances that a CR 2030 or 2032 is going to leak is ex exceedingly low, but yeah, yeah. This, is a, this is an imperfect world. And crazy stuff happens. And we all know that this is the only stuff you're going to leave to your uh, to your kids. You have spent their college <laughs> on old computers. So you better keep these things in good shape. So this is the front side of the board. The back side of the board needs a little bit of work. <laughs> but, I, uh, but I'm considering options of what to put on the back side. What but does CC111 mean? <laughs> oh, it's an ass. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, Thank you for a, a long walk down the pier for that joke. But 
but no, this is something I'm working on, and hopefully here in the next couple of weeks, I'll have something that I'll be sending to China to have be made by, I I guess, school-age kids, because it's China. BCB way! I know, it's, no. yeah, exactly. It's, <laughs> keep, keep trying to convince my wife to get the pixie cut, she won't do it. Yeah. So I guess my channel is is forever. I didn't star in uh like uh the the star wars prequels land i guess so anyway christian's a good sport christian if you're watching you passed our test you can be our friend <laughs> uh thomas armstrong mentioned something that was uh related to my previous thing about you can still get new 512k by 8 8 s ram still that's great can you send me a link find me a link go to jcm-1.com slash contact and send me a link to it so I can have it. I want it. Give smoke signals at this point. Yeah. Joe has made it too difficult to contact him. Yeah, ADHD. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Squirrel. Squirrel. Oh, oh, live stream. Squirrel. Oh, I have something to drink. <laughs> Why are you just drinking? Out, why are you drinking out of a cup made out of melted crayons, Joe? That's what I want to know. <laughs> this is a custom glass. I I know. I know. Glass. It's. It's called Crayola glass. <laughs> it's awesome. I have a whole set in every color of the entire rainbow. They're beautiful. Oh. So that's why you can't sleep. It's giving you nightmares. It's just enough radium to <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just enough yeah. radium. <laughs> <laughs> like you can really you can really taste taste the cadmium in yeah. these glasses. It's is it supposed to be like metal? That's the cause yeah. of your ADHD. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's <laughs> nice. You can tell you've got a good quality. Like Pizza Hut in the '80s, cadmium so level glass. When a when a glass of water tastes like a bloody nose, <laughs> that's that's how you know. Yeah. No, yeah. oh, so that's what's going on. Well, it's great news, Joe. Yeah, um, and I just like uh, just for a little um, comment, uh, I was talking to Joe about cloning that Z80 for the 2C, the mm. card. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> Of course, you know me with my big ideas. I say, "Oh well, why don't when I contact Flamin and ask him, why can, can we do something?" Oh, I know Sean is the one that asked me, "Why don't we do a, a new version with memory, like the uh, the RAM three with one gig of memory with a clock?" One gig. Well, I'm one sorry. gig. <laughs> I was like, "This one is an, this is an ambitious project." <laughs> <laughs> Got a satellite hookup. Yeah. That's yeah. right. <laughs> And uh, actually, yeah, we, we say, you know, all those things. And I, I told Plamen, hey, why don't we do that? You know, Z80, memory, um, clock and all that. So, yeah, yeah, it, it can be done. But, you know, there's no parts right now. So, yeah, we, we can't do anything. It's like, oh, gosh. There are make it with Lego. We're, we're at the point in the game. I'm going to make a Back to the Future 3 reference where, you know, the DeLorean was struck by lightning and they're going through and they're looking at all the parts and there was an IC that got shorted out. Mm -hmm. And so they were like, well, here's how you do it with 1950s equivalent parts. And then they there's that box that sets out like on the hood of the DeLorean that's got mm -hmm. like huge capacitors and <laughs> vacuum tubes and stuff like that. We're going to end we're, like that. I, we are we're getting to that real talk. We're getting to that point yeah. where I've seen some of these projects come out where they were like, well, I could just I could source some of these things. So I'm going to use this stuff instead. In the mm -hmm. ideal world, this would be like a three chip design or something like that with all of the, the yeah. larger, larger scale integration. And now it's like it's we're going backwards because people were at that second tier of parts where. People don't want to use it because it's more expensive or or whatever. I mean, you could just go out to DigiKey, go out to Mauser. You can look and see some of the components that used to be pennies, pennies before the uh, pandemic are now like a dollar seventy five a piece. So it's there. There's some gouging going on, and I think part of that is also to just stop people from just stockpiling. You're going to think twice about whether you really need to buy like a thousand a thousand units of some rather like common component, unless you're, unless you're doing some kind of mass, um, you know, sort of uh, production on something it's, it's getting tough. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, then it's not even about stockpiling. You can't get singles of certain chips right now. Mm -hmm. Like you'll see it mm -hmm. in key or, or mouser and you'll see the stock will have like four, 4,000 in stock of some, 
like 74LS32, some generic, you know, uh, NAND chip or something like that. And you'll go to order order five and they'll cancel your order. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not worth their time. Yeah. Because they got to the, uh, use. That's why the vintage computer market now is getting more expensive. People are going to be buying old computers and raping them for all their crap. Right. right. Oh, chips. Don't, don't do. Keep, keep work. Make a curve. No breaks. Yes. Yeah, no breaking. It's, it's it's funny though because like the people that used to just be the like oh, I'm just gonna like trim the gold off the bottom of these ISA cards are literally now at the point where they're like, should I desolder this OPL two? You know, should I yeah. grab these pals just in case they end up being something that somebody needs? It's uh it's kind of yeah. changed. It's it's honestly it's kind of for for as bad as it is that I hate to see people part out like I, I think the picture that always sticks in my mind is there was like a uh, like a gaylord like one of those big huge um cardboard boxes that you see that like it's the size of a pallet mm -hmm. and it was full of pc cards and the caption was hey what do you see on top and it was literally like dozens of uh gravis ultrasounds that just had the like somebody had gone in with like a scissor, or like electric scissors, and just zipped the ISA con connection off for the gold, and the rest of it was just getting trashed. I mean, it's f five cents worth of gold, and those were like those are like two hundred dollar, two hundred fifty dollar sound cards. It's like people didn't know what they've got. Well, no. I so so that always that hurt, it, it hurts my heart when I see stuff like that, guys. Come on, <laughs> but the um. But work. now people are really like being a little more conservation minded. Yeah. So they're thinking, you know, well, if I, you know, I, I, yeah, I could strip this stuff, but is there more value in it? So I think that's maybe good that people are finally to that point where if they are going to strip some things, maybe some of this silicon just doesn't end up in a landfill somewhere. Joe. Definitely. What? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. You had something. You had Bro. something. You flashed it on screen real fast. You were like, I, I dropped my tweezers, so I picked them up again. <laughs> Those are the world's sharpest tweezers, by the way. Dude, dude, I'm telling you, they're pointy. They are, because I, I stabbed the shit out of myself, demonetized. The other day, I had like a bag of like some parts where a friend of mine had replaced a battery in their machine, and I reached in the bag and I was like, ah! Like I thought something had bit me. And it was those it was those damn iFixit tweezers. Dude, I'm telling you, I'm gonna market a line of these and call them black widows. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, you're gonna get bit. I know. Not good. Cool. Do we have any anybody who has any questions or anything in the chat? Anybody wanna ask anything? Anybody have questions for uh mikebitfixer.com slash awesome dude? Uh yeah. I don't really think that's his surname. <laughs> Joe. It, it is now it's awesome dude. It's, it's, you know, when, it, it, yeah. 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 And it's mine. <laughs> it, it was Bite Meister when we came over, but at the island they changed it to Bit Fixer. It's so weird. It's they just erased my family's history with a pin yeah. stroke. <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. Oh, you can, oh, you can in the old days. Plus, it's your it's your family's own fault for being German. I just you know, sorry. <laughs> Nobody is safe on this channel. <laughs> Somebody asked, is 135 too much for a Mac 2CI? Yes. Okay, that's a quick next, answer. Next question. Well, no. no, seriously, what's a good value, uh, Ron? You know more about that kind of thing than I do. I don't want to pay anything for anything because I, I am cheap. And and people just give me stuff like because it's I work in higher education, so the there's a lot of people who get teacher connections where they're just like, you know, uh, pops collected this stuff for decades and we just want it gone because now it's a closet, or it's an attic full of craziness, and things like that. So I I would say that a uh, a two ci like if it's because you're gonna have to recap that yeah. absolutely, and you might have to recap the power supply. So by the time you're done. You might, if you can't do the work yourself, you might be a hundred dollars in on a repair. So I would say that like a two CI nicely appointed, like it's, it's got maybe max Ram, maybe a nice new bus video card, 
65 bucks. I know what I want to pay for things. That may not necessarily be what they're quote worth, but yeah. I have a question for Mike. Uh, Mike, um, are you selling the uh, pet? What's it called? The pet picks? The pet, the pet picks. Yeah. So that, yeah. that that one's kind of a weird story. That so the pet. Oh, we're a weird channel. So go ahead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah the, what what I the pet picks was really um, I guess there's two things which could be construed as the pet picks, but um, the original one is uh, it's basically it's a little it's like a small interface that sits on the user port of either C64 or pet. And then that also connects to Raspberry Pi. And it's basically like a video display for uh, like, I don't know, it's kind of like a Raspberry Pi acts as essentially like a graphics card for, for your pet or your 64. And you stream video to it. And then it either converts it into Petsky characters. So you have like this Petsky kind of art display. Or for the C64, it kind of down reses everything to, um, to like, you know, I forget which video mode it is. I think it's like the. <coughs> 320 by 160 or whatever, which whichever one with those wide pixels, right. um, and then it figures out all the colors, and then so uh, I I have a couple of them. I'll, I'll send you one. Uh, I it's kind of uh, it's in a state where I have to do some code archaeology just for just for <laughs> myself to figure out how to run it again. I ran, <laughs> I ran it as a demo, and then like that was in sort of the pre uh, getting everything in my GitHub repo days, and I've. I, I will figure out how to get it to work work again. <laughs> I'll send you one. Oh, yeah. Cool. The other thing, yeah, there's the there's an RGB to HDMI interface board, which some some people have been calling pet picks as well, which is a perfectly fine name for it. But um, that also exists. <laughs> and that one, uh, yeah, I guess eventually that'll probably I'll probably put that one up, or I'll just put up. I may not even I'm not even sell. I might just put the like the board the Gerber's up so you can make one. But it's right. like like an interface for RGB to HDMI for a for a PET 2001. Um, but PET Picks itself, uh, yeah, I have a few of them. I, I would like to get that working again, uh, you know, time time permitting. <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll send you one. I'll, if, as soon as I figure out how to run it myself, I'll let you know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Not like Ron, who sends me stuff without any documentation. It's like, this is pretty, but how would I hook it up? Well, I mean, like like we talked about earlier, what you're going to do is when you open up your dishwasher, you just you put it in the the little container where you would normally put the soap. So just make sure it's part of your like pre soak uh, cycle, and you should be fine. Yeah. And then do I stick it in with this? Do I put stick it in with these stickers like this? Correct. That's what that will keep it from yeah. rattling around and chipping your china. So yes. Oh, stick it in okay. <laughs> Actually, this is, you should talk about this, Ron. This is really cool. Okay, I will talk about it. It's, it's very many, cool. many, many years ago. There was a uh, a book that really spoke to me as a person starting out in the Macintosh repair biz. Um, it's actually bring Rudy up so he can show a picture of this thing because I don't have I don't have one here that I could show. Um, all right, there it is. It's um, basically the the whole idea is this: is that uh, back in the old days you could make what they called cat max um or you could uh, cat the, the cat mac the <laughs> that's exactly right it's um the idea was that you could um source a uh like a mac plus motherboard or an se motherboard and put it in a generic pc case to save money um and then use a larger uh, monochrome vga or not monochrome vga pardon but mga monochrome graphics adapter Mm -hmm. monitor or TTL monitor that supported uh, uh, 20 Hertz or whatever the refresh rate is on the um, on those old Macs. But yeah, the whole, the whole idea is basically that these uh, boards became unobtainium because there was no need, like people just didn't care. And so decades went by and you couldn't find them or they'd pop up on eBay and they'd be ex incredibly expensive. So that's why I went through as part of my new line of completely pointless um add-ons for your classic macintosh you uh yeah look at all this love um you can now uh have a little board that basically allows you to take the video output the horizontal and vertical sync and five volts and ground from your motherboard and you can use it to output to a external display if you've got a 
a TTL display or an MGA display, you can just build a real simple DB9 video adapter and plug that right in. Or as you can see, there's like some little pads there on the left. Um, you can also use those to solder in to something like a uh, RGB to HDMI. You can connect an RGB to HDMI directly to the analog board on your uh, classic Mac, or, or you can cut up the uh, interconnect cable between the analog board and the motherboard on your classic Mac. But um, I wanted to give people some options. It's kind of generic. It's got some big, uh, Joe immediately said, why are the holes so big? And I said, well, first of all, your mother. Secondly, um, because I wanted to give people the most options you would of what they can do. And so this is a 1.0 board. As you can see, I used the wrong footprint on the, um, the cap. So I, uh, the, the 2.0 board, look, there's Joe. He's way back there. Um, so you can use, uh, or actually, the 2.0 board corrects some of those things. It makes the hole smaller based on Joe's feedback. And then I, I use the correct footprint graphic for the cap, the decoupling cap for the chip. But it's basically just XR or XOR. So, I mean, your signals check in. They don't check back out. Kind of protect your motherboard, protect your analog board. And uh, that's that. And I like it, the fact that it's signed. Yes. And I, I signed some of them. I so I don't think I'm going to use this. I'm going to frame I, it. So I, I forgot. I forgot to when, sign them all. When you take, when you be hitting 90 years old, it'd be worth like millions, millions. Not only that, it it, it fends all the Chinese clones that are going to be flooding the market. I know. That's right. I just, I cannot wait. I, I really <laughs> hope to see some knockoffs of my knockoff. <laughs> um, but then I've also got a, uh, another project that I've been working on is basically a power supply breakout replacement for the 500 series Apple PowerBooks because those you use a weird uh, power supply because basically the power brick has two 16 volt power supplies side by side in there and they cook, they just cook themselves and there's no way to get in to do anything. Actually, it's funny, the advice online of how to get inside the power brick is to hold it at head height and drop it on the floor and whatever survives is what you're going to be able to recap. <laughs> so the getting inside the plastics because it's just so brittle it's just it's coming apart but um so i've got a uh, modern sort of replacement option for for that power supply nice so working right. on that and then uh, and then i've got that new thing where you saw it had a butt on it <laughs> oh. uh, cool. no how your butt Javier has got to get his prostate checked out, man, because there's no reason why you should have to pee like 10 times during this show. <laughs> well, I, I do. I, I do have to, to get that checked out. But anyway, I forgot that I did this little... Welcome to old men on TV! <laughs> Shut up and get out of my lawn! <laughs> make make sure you have your pull-ups. That's right. Mm -hmm. I, that's what I'm wearing right now. So no, we, no issues. <laughs> So I created this. Well, I didn't create it. Somebody did uh, post this uh, B, B, whatever it's called. It's a 3D um, file uh, of this. Uh, this is a, a floppy cleaner. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody put it on. And uh, what I did is I, I just took it and kind of added a little bit more lines or, or more, you know, um, support yeah, structure. Yeah. Structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it breaks Stop very it. easy. Yeah. And uh, rebar cross frames, rebar, yeah, that, that's articulation. That's on Stanley rebar, rebar. Yeah. So, <laughs> rebar. so I, I added this this piece so it, it actually goes in here and clicks in here and it stays there because the other one was like fiddling all the time. And I added also the this, the, the, yeah, the, the crank, the crank. So, so yeah, that makes the way easier to use, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So, you put it in and then you can do this and then clean it up. So just for you to know, and I, I uploaded the STLs to Thinkiverse and um, uh, Tinkercad, and the links are on, on Facebook and also mm -hmm. on Twitter. So if you guys want to get them and print your own, let me ask. You, let me are ask you, you this. Oh, sorry, Rudy. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say when you when you're cleaning it, is the idea is that you're kind of like putting some sort of soft material and then cranking it while putting a little bit of pressure? Or is the idea that it's just, okay, five degrees, clean, five degrees, clean, five degrees, clean? What I do actually is I use this, sorry to be out of name, but I use uh, some of these uh, lens, cl lens cleaners, mm -hmm. wipes, 
and I opened this up. I put the flop in here, and the lens wipe has a little bit of alcohol and cleaning material in there, and uh, and I just take it with with my my thumbs and begin to move it. I'm, I'm pushing with the thumbs uh, the cleaner and then move it around, move, move, move. I did a video on how I I, I clean up sometimes, but yeah, it's, you're supposed to be cleaning, and and this is not for all the, the floppies. This is for the floppies that are so dirty and they got like rotten stuff, mold, mold, yeah. and all that. That you you want to read it and at least be able to salvage whatever data is in there. It's not a you know a long time solution. It's just something to to clean it up enough to be able to get the data out of it. Right. Joe, don't you have a motorized version of that? Yeah. So the first idea that uh, that came up about something like this was Javier is a couple of years ago. Javier's like, hey, Joe, we should do this thing. And um, I think it was one of the first collaborations you and I did after after KFest 2019. Yep. So it's been around for a while. But uh, I did a little 3D printed frame. And I can't show you the, the actual Arduino because I'm using it for a different project. Um, I stole it. But basically, I created code for an Arduino and little connector pins and, and uh, 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 what's a doodle here? Uh, mm -hmm. that you could plug it into a floppy drive you, and then you could uh, basically coat the, 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 the floppy drive and you just use a dead one, you know, but you could coat the floppy drive heads with some felt and drip some, um, uh, some isopropyl okay. on there and you press a button on the Arduino and it would actually spin the disc and move the head back and forth a whole revolution to nice. auto. -coat it. So that's a, that's, nice. that's kind of a, a cool thing uh, that we could do. Yeah. That's a, that's a real, does it squirt like liquid on the sides as it's going through too, or <laughs> like you know, you know like the car wash or floppies? You know, I've, dude, it, it's it's sky's the limit, man. I mean, uh, the code is not on my GitHub because I don't have one, so you can just go ahead and not take that and do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a real sharper image level thing that you've built there. It's like a real sky mall sort yeah. of sort of thing. <laughs> Thank God, uh, I I don't have time. I don't. I just don't have the wrist strength to turn this crank. I just <laughs> if only there's got to be a better way. I've turned this crank and I can't get up. <laughs> <laughs> crank it, crank oh, it, man! That dude. All that man juice. You know, think about it though. This is it would be good archive, archivists or something if they've got a bunch of discs. They're all nasty. You can put it in, click the button, take it out. Put it in, click the button, and do yeah, that. Yeah, that would be processor. that would be the way to do it if you have a whole bunch of this. If you only have one or two, yeah, this would be this is actually quite cool. And I like the idea with the crank; it makes it easier than just turning that knob, right? Yeah, and that you reinforced it was a good idea because the other one, it, it's it's a great idea. But like Javier was saying, it when you're applying force, it's going to flex and it's going to break on those edges. Right. Yeah, I got another one that broke. That's why I, I know. So, so yeah, this is, and actually I, I sent, I should send this to, to Jason Scott, you know, Jason Scott's the guy that, that archive.org that just mm -hmm. is archiving every day. I, I actually gave him a, a floppy drive that reads 40, 40 tracks. Yeah. He can, mm -hmm. he can do it. He used it more than me. So, you know, better than him than me. Yeah. So, I'm building, I'm building the same version out of concrete for eight inch floppy disks. <laughs> okay. That's it. It's very portable. It's you know about four inches of concrete, and then you have a big, a big crank on the top, and it's like it's like an old bus. You know the bus from the fifties of the steering wheels, like huh? is this big steering wheels, like oh, it's spinning all over again. Use real rebar on that one, right? That's right. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Ah, oh, Javier, you and Brett. Again, it's the break. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I think we're coming up to the end of our show for this evening. So I want to uh, thank thank our guest again, Mike, Mr. Bitfix. Yes, for thank you. By, thank you, Mike. Talking us about so much. Yeah. Working on. Yeah. We have links to his GitHubs, his website, and his YouTube page in the show notes, the show description for this video, for the show, this VOD, whatever you want to call it. So you can click on those link doodles and go see uh, his uh, all of his stuff. Do you have anything that you want to add, that you want to promote, that you want to say is super awesome before before we get out of here, sir? Well, I'm just just want to say thanks for having me on. This was a ton of fun. Uh, appreciate it. Um, 
I guess nothing beyond what we've talked about already. You got the Romulator. There's the yeah. There's the Pet Disc Max. I guess I didn't talk about. That's the it's a Wi-Fi enabled uh, storage device for a Commodore Pet, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And um, yeah, just check out check out the website. Check out the YouTube channel. Um, and uh, everything's there. So cool. This is a lot of fun. Thanks very much. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for being on. It has been Thank super you. fun. So, shameless plugs, Javier, go before I cut off the video. Hey, bitches. Hey, bitches. Hey, bitches. Hey, bitches. Is it bad bitches? Do, do, do. Hey, bitches. Hey, bitches. Hey, bitches. Uh, go over there and get some t shirts, nice t shirts. And um, what else? Go to my channel, Have Master with a number three instead of the E. And um, I'm going to start doing good. some. Yeah. What, what? <laughs> oh, no, because that's not confusing. Go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm going to, uh, you see, it's, it's in my name now. No, over there. Yeah, yeah. Atari Buster. Uh -huh. Yeah, Atari Buster. So anyway, go to my channel. Uh, buy some T-shirts. If you guys want some ideas on some T-shirts that don't uh, got any copyright, let me know, and I'll put them up, and you can buy them. Anyway, nice. thank you very much. Cool. Rudy. Hi, I'm Rudy from Rudy's Retro Intel. Uh, you can find me at uh, on YouTube and things, mostly YouTube. Um, and just look for Rudy's Retro Intel. I cover all kinds of different uh, uh, retro computers, Apple's mostly, Commodore's, and then I'm still looking for uh, uh, a K Pro for myself, and I'm still looking for a, um, a Spectrum computer. Javier. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't have that in my collection, yes. So I will help you get that going. But <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, And that's it. That's me. Ron. Uh, hey, I'm Ron from Ron's Computer Videos, and I've got good SEO, so just Google. But I would like to use my time this week to promote a fellow YouTuber who's been doing, making some strides and doing some new stuff, Mr. Justin D. Morgan. Uh, you can check him out at youtube.com forward slash user JDMCS. You can also find him on Twitter at JDMCS. And uh, Justin is always doing some fun new things. You should definitely check out his channel. Absolutely. Yep, he was on our channel at one point. Great, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of fun. My name is Joe from Joe's Computer Museum. I'm not going to cede my time because I'm an egotistical ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, Justin D. Morgan. Um, yeah, he's he's been one of my biggest supporters for my channel for a very long time, and nearly single handedly helps fund this organization back here. Um, so thank you to him and all of his support over the years. But uh, yeah, um, I have I'm on the Yub Tubs under Joe's Computer Museum. You can find me on the Twitters uh, at Museum Joe. I also have a website, JCM dash one dot com where you can go buy cool t-shirts where you can get cool nifty replacement parts for your vintage computers that don't exist anymore new stuff coming all the time and if you have a board or some old computer or anything like that that you want repaired you can go on there and send me a repair request and if i think i can do it get you set up and we'll get you fixed even if he doesn't think he can do it it's um he will he will just like the old the old college try Dude, for $5, I'll do almost anything. It's true. <laughs> His fiver is way dirtier than what you would think. Yes. <laughs> anyway, we got to get out of here. We're going to get so banned on this channel. <laughs> it's, how do you get banned from your own channel? I it's, don't we're, know. We're already demonetized. Yeah. So <laughs> it's. How do you get banned from our own channel, Ron? <laughs> <laughs> oh Hi, Ron. <laughs> just like that just like that <laughs> anyway thank you everyone oh. for stopping by thank yes, you thank everyone for our guest this evening it was super yes. fun remember yes. to lasso that like button and saddle up right on to next to that subscribe button and uh, our next video is actually not in two weeks it's in three this is our bye week so our next video will be in three weeks on june 5th 2022. See y'all later, everybody.